Okay, so here we are. We are putting the nostrils in, and there's this weird artifact. And uh, generally, this is the cool part about parametric modeling, is you look in and you go, oh, there's some weird unsolvable defect. And I thought I did the math right, but it looks like we're missing an interface. So if we go back into chisel uh, point, we've moved it um, point length, right? To get the cylinder to touch, but if we go just slightly below that, just insignificantly, all of a sudden the math gets a little solvable. So you can see here at 0.01 it's not enough, and 0.5 it is. And so generally when that happens, I'll just go to 0.01, right, instead of uh, double at one. And all of a sudden the math is solvable, which means that we can go through in our parametric model and then make sure everything works. And then we don't get these unsolvable data points that uh, make our computer crash when we put in pupils and nostrils and things like that. So um, now what we can do is go back and adjust nostril depth to the correct size and then um, define a nostril that we feel is appropriate at that depth. So let's go down to 8. And if we think we're going to adjust this regularly, it should be a variable. So now that we have nostril depth, we'll do nostril size. Okay. And we'll call that variable here. If I can spell correctly. Okay. And we'll put that same variable. In fact, better to do it once you type it once, but I always like typing it individually just so I don't get it redundantly wrong. We're going to change it to a different number just so we can tell the difference between our nostril depth and our nostril size. But there they are, beautiful little nostrils, mathematically correct. And now we can start cutting them out. So we're going to go track down our chisel cutter. There it is. And we're going to need to find our orientation. And we know our nostrils get us close, so we may steal our translate function from there. Um, but we won't be rotating anything, so we just need this bit. And there'll be a paradox here, I'm sure, because um, we aren't actually trying to uh, <laughs> cut offset, right? So one of these takes us to center, and it's a question of which. And because width is an 8, I assume we've been moving up and down, so I'm using that for my orientation. And we're going to assume that we need to move 0 in our x-axis. And let's just see how wide our chisel cutter is. Okay, so our chisel cutter is 15 millimeters wide. What we actually need it to be is as wide as our length and probably a little longer, to be honest. But let's find out. So length and then just plus two. So we get an extra millimeter on each side. That's great. And that's not where we want the mouth. The mouth doesn't come out of the nostrils. And uh, we can probably just take that straight up to the height plus two. So now we're just contacting the interface. And again, you can see the math is really mad at us right now because we haven't junctioned anything to give it something calculable. So um, we'll make a new variable now. Depth. And uh, over here, we'll put that by nostril. Now depth. And I don't know. Uh, depends on how far you want to go. You can do 3 millimeters, you can do 10. We'll do 3 for now. Okay. And we need to get it in the right orientation, so I'm guessing probably width over 7 eighths might get us close. Ugh, much too far. Let's see where width takes us. Ah. So, get the width over 2, that takes us to the bottom. Width over 4 takes us to the middle. So we need something between width over 2 and width over 4. 
So let's do with over three. That looks good. We have our mouth. And we can cut it as deep as we choose. But now the interesting thing is we take this, and this is our straight cut. We tend to do it on both sides. Oops. So we want our second one, and we're going to have to rotate it around one of the axes. And we're just going to guess. There we go. So you can see how far in it's actually cutting on uh, both sides. So then we're going to do the same thing. But we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we'll take that and rotate it negative 90. There we go. So now you can see we've really cut into this mouth. And uh, let's just blind that so we can see what's going on here. And so it gives it kind of a silly look, almost like it has dentures. So what we want to do is we want to make this angle very small. And so we'll make mouth angle a variable. And so you can see how when you make these modules, they get super complicated really quickly. And um, that can be a bit of a problem because when you look at someone's parametric module, you're like, it's so big, how did I get to this thing? But as you build it as you go, you start to understand where it all came from and how you define that geometry. You just take your time and then make sure everything works. So there's our mouth angle. That's pretty good. Um, I think that as we cut in deep from the sides, we may want to um, change the angle of our cutter even further and actually move the cutter further out so that there's room for teeth. So that involves another translation, and that would be length over 3. So let's see if that moves it out. And let's, let's really bring the chisel out so we can see where we are. Yeah, maybe length over 2. 4. 4 seems appropriate. And we're going to take that, and we're going to pass it to the other side here. And then just make sure that it's negative, right? And so then you can see that there's a nice narrow cut making a mouth. And we can make that angle just a little bigger. So our initial cutter leaves room for a tongue. So let's just finish the formatting and uh, take a look at our model. So now we have our mouth cut and we can start doing the butcher step. So save this as mark two.